Hey everyone, and welcome to the Hamilton Arts Awards. My name is Gavin Stevens, and I'll be the host and MC for this year's festivities. You might have seen me on CTV or the Comedy Network, possibly CBC, but I also host my own podcast called Uncolonized. Some of you might be thinking, Gavin, how come you're going into my ear holes and not in front of my eyeball places? That's because this year's award show is going to be a podcast. For those of you my age and a little bit older, a podcast is a radio play on the internet. Each episode, I'll be interviewing a winner, allowing you to get to know each and every one of these talented people. We had a lot of laughs, got to know the artists, and found out what each one of these talented people planned on doing with their award after the show. I had a great time hanging out with these people, and I hope you do as well. So without further ado, please enjoy the Hamilton Arts Awards podcast. Janet Rogers is a Mohawk Tuscarora writer from the Six Nations territory of the Grand River where she operates the Ojitsto publishing label. Janet works in page poetry, spoken word performance poetry, video poetry, and recorded poetry with music. She is a radio broadcaster, documentary producer, and media and sound artist. Over the past 11 months, Janet has been the Mabel Pugh Taylor Artist in Residence, a joint effort with McMaster University and HPL. The Arts Awards are pleased to have commissioned a series of recordings from Janet that will appear in each episode of our podcast series. Not a hopeless love. Lonely love hovers above space and contemplation. Contentment fleeting, seeing pastures below, plowed and fertile, waiting impatiently, hope as yet unanswered. Am I in love? No more blending incompatible ingredients, blowing out birthday candles only to keep my own secret. I am asking all the animals for assistance. Assistance they deliver. Snakes, southern lizards, filling valley bowls of happiness. We defend our love with love. We've been cleared to swim in the river, endure frigid temperatures, a lonely love, no more. Now please welcome Ward 15 Counselor Judy Partridge on behalf of the City of Hamilton. All right, well, folks, here we are again. It's Judy Partridge from Ward 15 in Flamborough, and here we are once again during COVID celebrating the Arts Awards. And, you know, hopefully next year, who would have thought that this would be our second year? But hopefully next year, we've got to get back into the theater. I know we all miss each other so much. But, you know, we're blessed with the diversity of culture and arts that we have in our city. And, you know, if it wasn't for the volunteers and the sponsors and city staff and all of the organizations, and most importantly, if it wasn't for you, the artists, we would not have the Arts Awards and we would not have as vibrant an art scene as we have in Hamilton. So God bless all of you. Thank you so much for everything that you do. I know it's been a real struggle this year, but we're all here for you and uh, looking forward to next year. And the key word is plan and pivot. Thank you so much. I'm originally from Toronto. I moved here in 2012 on the behest of my wife. I'm joking. She's listening. My wife's a Hamiltonian. She has that joke, you know, that Hamilton joke. How many O's are in 14 O's? Apparently 14. Oh, Hamilton. I know now that I'm fully Hamilton, though. Like, I'm fully immersed in this, right? Here's how you know you're a Hamiltonian. You have a slight defensiveness when your city's brought up, right? Like, it's just like it's something they put in the water, right? Every time I go to Toronto, someone's like, hey, where are you living now? And I'm like, instantly, Hamilton. But it's getting good. It's getting way better. I love watching Hamilton on TV, especially like when it's like a futuristic dystopian show like Handmaid's Tale. And then all of a sudden the SHO store appears in the background. You're like, oh my God, they put a nice coat of paint on it. 
All that being said, I have a podcast called Uncolonize. Each week, my friend Daniel Grant and I talk about social issues, political issues, pop culture issues, and racism in Canada, and we make it funny. I know that's hard to understand, but if you listen to it, you'll get it. Uh, You can listen to it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, you can get Uncolonized. Freelance writer and editor Jennifer Gillies started as a volunteer with Gritlet in its second year and has been employed as an artistic director since the festival was incorporated. My name is Jennifer Gillies, and I'm the artistic director of the Gritlet Festival. It's just a literary festival. How did you get involved with that? I started as a volunteer, actually. So the festival started in 2004. And um, I kind of just came in on, as a weekend volunteer that year because I was friends with the person who had started it. And then she left after the first year. So the person who took over asked me to come on and help as a committee member, which I did. And then she moved out west after two years, uh, two years after that. So I ended up kind of jumping in and taking over as, um, at the time, co-artistic director. And then when the uh, my partner moved on, as artistic director. Uh, are, are you born and raised in Hamilton? I am indeed, yeah. Where, where'd, you, where'd you grow up? First few years in Ancaster and then we moved to the West Mountain and I, I lived there for a while. I moved to Korea for a few years and I taught and then uh, moved right back to Hamilton. And it was funny because when I was overseas, I didn't imagine this was somewhere I would ever settle again. I thought after seeing so much of the world, I would kind of be looking for a change when I came home. But the city that I came back to was so different from the city that I left. And it just, it's amazing to see the the growth and the um, evolution of Hamilton. Was there something specific that made you want to stay? I think it was just, it was such an, a really lovely surprise to come back and see the really positive changes that, that were happening. Um, you know, when I grew up in Hamilton, it was always kind of, you know, nobody went downtown. It was, the downtown core was sort of dingy. There wasn't a lot of life there. And then I came back to a whole revitalized downtown area and James Street North and, you know, the, the birth of the arts community or the growth of the arts community, it's always been there. Um, and that was really exciting to see. What, uh, what does this award mean to you? It's just, it's a really lovely um, surprise after a really horrible year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's been, it's, it, it's been a rough one. It has been a rough one. And I mean, this is, you know, it, I've been doing the job for a long time. I've been working in the arts in Hamilton for a long time. So it's really, uh, truly lovely to be recognized for that. Um, but honestly, it's not, it's not the primary thing. I'm just really excited to see how the arts community is thriving. And um, it's, it's, um, I feel really lucky to be a part of it. Can you explain the Gritlet Festival? Absolutely. So Gritlet is a readers and writers festival. So basically we um, invite writers from across the country every year to come and present for Hamilton audiences. We also uh, put a big focus on um, promoting the work of Hamilton authors and offering um, opportunities uh, in education opportunities through workshops and interactive events for up and coming Hamilton authors, but it's just really a great chance to celebrate Canadian books and writers. Mm -hmm. How, How did it come about? So a Hamilton author named Krista Foss actually founded it back in 2004. And I think it basically came about because she decided that, um, you know, Hamilton was a big thriving city and we were one of the few big cities in Canada that didn't really have a literary arts festival. No, I I was wondering how many years it's been going uh, since its inception. Yeah, so as I said, it started in 2004. We switched from fall to spring at one point, so we lost a year, but we just finished our 17th festival. Oh, wow. How how has it changed over the years? It's been a fairly slow progression. Um, We started fairly small and, you know, stayed there for a while. It was was sort of a grassroots collective organization for a long time, but Mm -hmm. within the past 10 years, um, we've certainly seen it, you know, incorporated and become a charity and start to operate on a larger and larger scale. So I'd say really it's, that's, that's it. We're still, I hope, holding to true to the values that the festival was started with, um, but yeah. just growing it a little bit every year. And of course, after this year, I'm moving everything online. Um, you know, those changes, I think, are going to have amazing long-term repercussions. I don't see us ever going back to just doing an in-person festival again. 
I think it's always going to include an online component, which is something we hadn't done in the past. Uh, how are you holding up in COVID right now? How, how is your mental health and everything? Are you doing okay? I actually just had a birthday yesterday. Um, my second one. Oh, happy birthday. Thank you. My second one in lockdown. And that actually was, I just didn't enjoy it very much. It's, I'm, I think like most of us, it, you know, we're doing the best we can. I'm just so ready for this to be over. It's, it's been a really long time. And I was saying to somebody recently, and I've actually started writing about this, that um, I spent, as I said, I spent six, six years overseas. I lived in Korea for a while. And it just occurred to me that what I'm experiencing with COVID is, is culture shock. It's very much like the culture shock I experienced living in a, in a different country, um, in that it's nothing is so different that you feel like you should be upset but everything is just different enough to to throw you off balance and it's so unsettling I've, I've never heard someone describe it like that it but it makes so much sense it is kind of like especially when COVID first started it was like what's going on like it's it's the same Hamilton but the streets are completely empty it's like yeah it's very weird yeah um what do you miss most about pre-COVID well, in terms of the festival, I definitely miss the the face to face. Um, I mean, one of the great joys of of a festival like Gritlet is you get to see people um, discovering new writers and and discovering new books and just enjoying being there and celebrating arts and artists and and writing in Canada. So I I really do miss that part. Um, it, on a personal level, I, I just miss I miss being able to hug people. It's been what a year oh yeah yeah every time I see my parents which is always distance they're always trying to hug me and I'm like it's it's weird to be like no stay away from me like it's it's such a weird weird uh, uh place to be uh have you learned anything about yourself during this time um yeah I'd say I'd learned a lot about myself during this time I um you know had a few struggles during it because there were certain you know events from my childhood that I'd never really grappled with before and when you're stuck in isolation and have nothing to do except you know navel gaze all day things tend to come to the surface yeah so yeah there's there's been a lot um a lot of changes and I think I'll, I'll come out of this as many of us will a very different person than I went into it is, is there a positive aspect of that like I mean you're you're like I completely agree like uh I'm isolated with my own thoughts a lot of the time and you're just going through things like you're, I do a lot of self checks, like to make sure I'm okay. But like, is there something positive you can pull from it? I think there is. I mean, I've been, you know, kind of working, um, working with a counselor for a while to, to talk through some other issues. And, uh, you know, what she said to me is you're here now because you're ready to be here. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it, these things were not dealt with before because you weren't ready. And the fact that if COVID might have been what brought them up, but they came up because you're at a point where you, you're strong enough to handle them. And that's a very positive thing. Um, it's not fun and it's not, it's not enjoyable to be going through, but it's, it's positive to know that it's happening because um, that strength is there to let it happen that wasn't there in the past. Absolutely. Uh I, I, growth is that it's, it's getting, it's going through pain. That's how you grow. So, I mean, I mean, it's uncomfortable and it feels like it's the end of the world, it, but yeah, it's growth. Uh, you, you talk about uh, the Gritlet helping and promoting artists. Where did that love of helping and nurturing and promoting artists come from? Again, a really good question. Um, I feel, um, you know, I think again, like many of us in the arts, I, I've dealt a long time with imposter syndrome because I feel like I sort of fell into this job that I never really intended to do. Um, but I don't know. The more the more I got into it, the more I just found that it's it, it's an exciting thing to do. It's an exciting thing to be part of a creative community, and it's it's exciting to be. Um, a, you know, as an, an actor or a singer or a writer, it's exciting to be that on that side of the creative process, but there is also a reward to being the support for that kind of creative growth. And I don't think I expected that, but I'm finding that it is, um, it is a really wonderful thing to feel like 
you know, that's what, that's what my job is. That's what I get to do is I get to support um, creativity and what a wonderful goal. What a wonderful pursuit. Do you find there has been an increase in new literary artists in Hamilton or at least an in interest? I, I think there probably has. Um, I mean, we've always had great interest in the writing workshops. They're definitely doing much, much better over the past few years than they have in the past um, as our audiences continue to grow. But I think we've always had a really strong arts community in Hamilton. We are finding more and more artists moving into Hamilton. We've seen a lot of writers who used to live in Toronto now moving to Hamilton. Um, so that's exciting to see. And I think probably COVID had something to do with that as well. I think people are sort of looking at this saying, well, I'm stuck at home. I have all this free time. Maybe now is the time to start, you know, trying things that I always said I would do and never got around to doing. You booked Margaret Atwood for this last year's festival, I believe. <laughs> we did. Yeah. And it was then COVID and, and then, but even though you didn't, it didn't happen. What does that mean for the festival? Well, we were just so thrilled. Um, I mean, you know, she was she was lovely and gracious um, in agreeing to come. I have to say, she was a trooper right up to the end. We were we were getting, you know, closer and closer to knowing that we were going to have to cancel. And I was getting in touch with her assistant, and she was saying, you know, no, she's still fine to come. Just let us know what's happening. And then we finally did have to make the call to shut down, of course. Um, yeah. But you know, it's just I think for. A small arts festival, we, we just struggle all the time with getting um, not so much the artists, but the artists' representatives to believe that we're worth their time. And that's honestly what happened with Margaret Atwood. Um, you know, we just kind of heard through a uh, somebody who knew her that she was wondering why she'd never been invited. And we'd invited her a number of times. It just never, it never got through. And I understand that because, you know, she has people whose job it is to keep her schedule and she's hugely in demand. Um, so they do have to prioritize, but it's, it's nice to get to the point. And I think, you know, having um, writers like Margaret Atwood and, and the number of many, uh, sorry, many of the wonderful, wonderful writers that we had at the festival um, say, yeah, Gritlet's worth our time. It's worth this visit to Hamilton to go to this festival uh, kind of gives us more, um, more legitimacy in the wider community, which certainly helps moving forward. Uh, through Gritlet, you 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 seem to champion intersectional diverse voices. Why is that important? Why is that a, an important part of the mandate of the festival? I think that needs to be an important part of the mandate of every festival at this point. Um, I it you know, and we went through a number of growing pains to get here. We you know we've made some mistakes along the way, absolutely. But I just think that the more that we hear other writers talk, the more we hear different voices, the more books we read, the more the world opens up and we see that, you know, the way that I was raised in this society is not reflective of the way everybody else was raised in this society. And yeah. there needs to be um, there needs to be recognition of that. There needs to be conversations about that. And if we are lucky enough to have a platform to host some of those conversations, then it's not just our right, it's our responsibility to do that. What do you find is, is the defining characteristic of Hamilton? At this point, reinvention. I think Hamilton has really, as I said, we, we had, when I grew up, Hamilton was a steel town. That's all I knew. That's how we was always told to think of Hamilton. That's, that's how um, Hamilton defined itself at the time. And that has obviously changed. And it's it hasn't changed easily necessarily. It's taken a while, but it's it, it, Hamilton feels like it's a city that is constantly reinventing itself. It's constantly evolving and growing. And I don't think that's true of a lot of places. Um, I think a lot of places kind of just have decided this is what we are and this is what we're going to stay. But yeah. Hamilton is a really um, vibrant place to live because of that. That's an interesting answer to that question. This has been a this has been fun. Uh, I, I I got to know a lot about you in this in this short time. Thanks for doing this interview and uh, congratulations on the award. Thank you, Gavin, and, and thank you for the award. I'm really honored. And that's episode eight, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and listening to my interview with Arts Creator Award recipient Jennifer Gillies. 
The music in today's episode was by Paolo Leon Riaz, Tara Lightfoot, Dylan Hudecki, and Aline Felice. Illustrations by Michaela Rubik Mazur, Robin Lightwalker, and Michael Byers. The City of Hamilton Arts Awards are presented during Arts Week, June 3rd to the 12th. To learn more about Arts Week or the Save the Arts campaign, visit hamiltonartscouncil.ca. Stay tuned for our next episode tomorrow at 7 p.m. Production by Cobalt Connects, Lilt Films, and me, Gavin Stevens.